Thank you, uh, Tabo, for that nice introduction. Uh, I'm Trust, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, SEO. A bit of background about myself is that uh, I started doing websites, I think in 2008, when I was still in college, uh, that's been drawing this. Um, then I was using, I was just trying out everything, Joomla, a lot of, a lot of things. Then I decided to focus specifically on WordPress, I think about uh, around 2011, after seeing that it is easy to hand over projects to clients, was like uh, Job said, over time, it's as a developer, sometimes you want to get the little money that you, when somebody calls for change this, you want to charge them, but over time, it is easier for a client to manage their own thing, because it's difficult to charge them every time they make a change request. So that's why I basically moved over to, to WordPress. And I've, I had to start this uh, web design company because the guys I was working for, they said they were going to Dubai, and I was jobless. So I had to do something that let me stay afloat. And um, so I'm just gonna talk about search engine optimization using WordPress with Zimbabwe in case studies. Why I had to include this Zimbabwe thing is because if you go and Google SEO, you get a lot of results, and this present for many other things, but the results are not relevant for our local space. I think many of us have experienced that thing. When you look for maybe uh, WordPress tutorials, everything you get there, there's nothing done by Zimbabwe. Not that there are no people who have done it, but because most of the things that we do produce, they are not optimized. And this thing goes from very low levels who are maybe some of us who are entrepreneurs to big corporates with uh, all the resources they could have. So the first thing I'm just going to do is to give a definition of SEO. Uh, this is if you want an academic definition. There it is. It's um, a methodology of strategies and techniques and tactics used to increase the amount of visitors to a website by obtaining a high ranking. So the so um, purpose of SEO is to get more people to see your website and eventually they hope that when they come to your website they will be converted to the clients. And just maybe to, to say, uh, how many of you here, maybe if you could just lift your hand if you don't mind, know that you rank at a certain number or like I'm number three for this particular place for your website. How many you specifically know? Is there anybody like that? You know that you rank for number seven for this way, for number two for this way. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Right. What I wanted to show by this is that this thing, SEO, is uh, there are a lot of people who claim to be doing it. Many developers, when they are asked for SEO, they actually can quote you for that. But most of them have not actually done well for their own space. Alright, I'll get more to that. So why is this really important? The thing is this, when people look for uh, solutions online, and now I think with uh, new development, you, think you can just talk to your phone and say, hello Google, if you're using Android, I need to find where common web design is. It will tell you that common web design is at this point, at this point. So you need SEO so that you are easily found. Do you understand? For example, some people do, sorry, I'm a, I'm a pastor, so, I'm used to getting responses from the congregation. <laughs> <laughs> so I often ask patients to say, do you understand this stuff? Don't, don't mind them. If I say amen, just, just ignore it. <laughs> just think, feel like don't hear. So the reason for SEO is that you want to be found. And sometimes, like I have a couple of examples. I don't know if I'll be able to mention some brands, but uh, people do, for example, radio advertising. But when you search for the thing that they're advertising on the radio, you search it on Google, you don't find neither the company nor the product. So that does uh, a lot of uh, disservice to the organizer. So this is like the buying process. This is what happens when people are buying online. First of all, they have a problem. Let's use uh, like a sore throat as an example. They have a sore throat and it's bothering them. They can't be as productive as they need to. What do they do? They go on Google and find out common maybe causes of what? Of sore throat. Then at that point, they get information and then they do. So at this point here, yeah, this is where SEO matters. You want to be found as somebody who is providing solutions to real life problems. Now, the sole purpose of websites, I'm going to take this from the business point of view. 
is to generate business for your company. Even if you say that you are like my sister, she was talking about tickets. The sole purpose of building that website is to generate more business for, for, the, for selling what? The tickets. Alright? So if you have a beautiful website, it's great. Of course, if we type www.your website, we'll get there. But you want to get clients who don't know about your existence before. Getting solutions from you so that you get people who don't know you completely conducting you and doing business with you. And that's a key way to grow your business. A lot of people that I know, at least, they get business from referrals. They get business from within their content circles. That's why people do exchange business cards and meetups and places like this. It's a way of growing the networks. But rather, it would be much better if you could get business from anonymous people, like you are a so, uh, you are just an entrepreneur, and then you get a phone call from, let's say, uh, Procomotors say that we need you to do this for us. That would be just fantastic, isn't it? So, and that's the main advantage of doing SEO. All right. So this is like the buying, whatever stage, the whole of things goes into that. But I just end here at the information stage where people are looking for solutions, and you need to be found when people do look for for things. All right. So I'll move on. Then I'll say SEO falls somewhere within the whole thing about online marketing. It is not the only solution, it falls within uh, online marketing. So there's a whole lot of things, online directories, email marketing, use, uh, like my brother did, does use, there's PPC, which is Google PPC or Facebook, whatever. There's a whole lot of things, but SEO is part of this mix. So also, if you, not all the solutions are going, not all the problems, sorry, are going to be solved by SEO alone. Some will be solved by PPC. Some will be solved by maybe video advertising on YouTube or something else. All right, but SEO is not, I don't want to present it as the word of online marketing or online sales. It's not the only thing, but it's important. And I think it's the cheapest of all this to do if, if it done well. Right. So does this thing work in Zimbabwe, right? From my, I think I'm tracking maybe over 30 websites, Google Analytics and stuff. The general thing is that. 92% of search is done, they are done on Google. And um, I personally have made a business in the past one year after rebranding my business from one part to another, and also growing some kind of an agency from being a, a, a freelancer uh, using SEO. So it actually does work here. But sometimes when you see these things on YouTube, you will feel that it's all American or it's European or maybe it works in Africa because the economy there is better than here, but right here, it actually working at least for me. All right. So and then, um, so a bit of uh, a bit of history is that uh, I had to rebrand my uh, the name I was using online from Proe Zimbabwe to Kaulo. Why? Because I was getting half of my phone calls from people. There's a organization called Proe is a women's business forum, something, something. So, half of my phone calls were coming from people who were, who were lost for that time because I was ranking higher than them for the brand name. So, to a point where somebody made a payment into my account when they wanted to pay the other company. So, I had to change the name and use Kaulo. So, in December, in December last year, I started using this, this name. Um, and this is a screenshot of my rankings the day that I made this presentation, which is around the 20th of November, uh, I think, around there. So when you search for SEO in Zimbabwe, the number one guy is, I'm still looking for this person, I've not seen them physically, but I'm still looking for them. If you, if they are products, you want to It's a coin web. A coin web. A-K-O-I. WEB. I'm still looking for them, but was they, they really do well in terms of SEO for at least my space. So I'm number two, I've become number two, and this is maybe in a space of let's say 11 months, but actually the truth is that I set up this page for SEO in around June this year. So in about four months, I managed to move from anonymous to number two for SEO. What does this mean? What it means is that even the people who claim to be doing SEO, I have not optimized their website to rank very well. And 
if you had yeah, a chance to look at these results, you may see that the big brand names that you know about, they all don't show up for this system. Right? And then uh, the other example is about web design. Web design, I, I remember my results in March. Uh, from December to March, I think I became number four for web design in Zimbabwe. Like a, a lot of other people walk up a bit to have runs uh, to main authority and whatever. So I've now been pushed down to, I think, number seven. Uh, because some people who were online giants who didn't realize that but they walk up and started doing some these things. They come about it because there's an issues of authority and what what you want. So they can you can overtake it. But I'm just showing you as an example. So what it does is it generated sales for me. I've been able to sustain the business, run an office from zero, and it's it's working for me. I don't have a lot of contacts because I moved into Harare because of work. I don't have a lot of contacts. My uncle here, my sister there, I don't have contact. All the people is people who call me anonymously and I've been able to work with them. Then I'll use another example for my which is coming from my my company. Uh, all right, maybe just to shed a bit of more light. The other like advantage of using uh, SEO is that it gives higher credibility. Recently, I received a phone call from one of these major motor vehicle sales companies, and they called me and said, "Hi, trust." I said, "Hey, uh, how are you?" Says, "I'm calling from this company. I'm so excited that I found somebody who is good at what they say. What do you mean?" He says, "I'm looking for somebody to do SEO for us, and you are number two for SEO." And your website looks good, you look like you know what you're doing. So, what it does is automatically, before I start pitching, talking about my price and everything, I have a lot of positives. Like, your Google trusts you, so maybe you should be good. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? So, it adds credibility to whatever you're doing. Then, visibility, uh, you wanna be known. I think this is, you wanna be known. So, somebody says, for whatever they see you, they see you there, it just adds up to. Then the brand, then cost effectiveness. Most of us here, in fact, I think everybody here, if you set your mind to do it, you can do your own SEO and, and do very well. So it's, it's a DIY kind of thing. Then, um, so I've got another client who have allowed me to use uh, their thing. This is to do with branding. You just want to be known. You know, there's some brands that when you search online, uh, the images that come there have nothing to do with their business. The, or they said, like, I know a certain company, they are number 23 for their brand name. Like, search for the company brand name, that company is number 23. <laughs> All the other results are nonsense and useless things. So, this is good. Uh, SEO helps you, like, this is, this thing here, if you want us, some of us, this is a sport, uh, it's part of local SEO. Uh, you want to have your company, when you put your name there, you want to have your logo here and your company name there. This is local SEO. What does it brings out results depending on where you are? It brings out the companies which offer the service that you are searching for depending on your location. So if you are in the well, the results will be different than when you are in the So this uh, thing just adds that branding aspect to it. People who know you already, they say, yeah, this is the thing I'm looking for because of that. That's SEO. All right. So that's the branding. Um, so, yeah, perceptions of people change when they can be found on Google. One sign of people who are actually bogus is that you can't find them on Google. So if you are not a bogus person, you are not a cheat, you are not a crook, but you can't be found on Google, you unfortunately can be classified with the other group. So you want to be found, you want to have your contact details there so that it works out. Um, so I have one other client who is in the e-commerce space, they, I don't have the rights to mention their name. Uh, they prefer to be anonymous. Right, in this client, um, the website was fully functional. Like you go there, you sign up, you make your payment, you are happy, you get your things coming home, and it's all working, right? But then there was a problem, right? The problem is that, uh, the problem was that, uh, uh, Number one, they didn't know how many people came to their website on a monthly basis because they didn't have Google Analytics installed or any other analytics plugin for that matter. Number two, they didn't know uh, where they are doing in terms of competition with their other shops they're competing with. Because one, one other thing in this was you can, I can check your website, like my brother at the back, 
I'm also checking his website because it's direct competition with me. I'm checking his website for web design. I'm, so I know where he is about this way. I know where I am about that. And I can see what he's doing, what I need to do, and what I, what I can do to work. I'm like recently, for the local uh, search in Iran, I was number eight for, for the local results. The local results are those, those the little made thing in the list camp. So I realized that the person on the top is more uh, Google reviews than me. So I called a few of my friends and some of my clients said, guys, you know something, I need reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so they just, within a week, I think I've got about six of them. This guy had 25, but they are all, I think, four or five months old. So I had six new reviews added in a week. Within a space of about four or five days, I came to be number one for the local. So the thing is, so you can check your competition, know what they're doing and what they're not doing. And I'll show you how to do these things within WordPress in, in, in a short while. So you can check you. So they didn't know all these things. Online shopping in Zimbabwe, they were number 100 or something. This is, so they were just there, but they didn't know how to improve. Like, uh, one of the things to do with websites is that when you build it, it needs to develop. It needs to become better. And you don't, this is my... The most painful experience I have with clients is they want to do websites on their own preferences. No, something I like people. Let's put this thing here. We will need bubbles. We need, but a whole lot of those things are really useless because they don't help clients who are the people of the website to do what they want to do. So you want to have something that helps with information to know what good on. My brother was talking about uh, design. One of the things that's about design is because we don't have client input. Like for this particular client I'm talking about, they are landing page, they are an online shop, uh, but their landing page didn't have any product. <laughs> they were, they did other things which are not product. So I came in, I said, we need to redesign this thing and do it this way. Then I can show you from your bounce rate and your client flows that you're losing clients here and all that and all that. So these are all things that are mostly done by free tools, available very good to learn, just that most people, and I kind of learn the developers in that. Number one, we don't conscientize the clients about it. Number two, uh, we don't even know how to do it for our own websites. That's why it is easy to penetrate that space where developers are occupied peacefully. <laughs> because the developers themselves don't know how to do it. So it, it's, it's, I'm kind of passionate about this. If I, if I seem too emotional, please <laughs> just bear with me. All right, so I'll talk about the, the benefits uh, about Ofeso again. It gives you facts about your website. How many people are coming to your website and why? What way do they use on Google to learn on your website? A good example maybe, which I could share with you for my own company, I, do, I know my brothers do not take advantage of that, is that it is better to use the word uh, create website than web design. In that, more people use search for create website than they use web design. All people who say web design, they are taking people, they know what they're doing, and they are likely going to be difficult clients. The people who say create, the people who say create website, they don't know what they are looking for. They just need something online, and they are going to be easy. Like the example that my sister uh, gave. Your boss never put it on a corner. Said, Why did you put this thing here? They, 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 they change this thing to a boss. But all needed is what a website. So such people use create website. So for good business, you may need to optimize for create website rather than what, rather than uh, web design. Another example is accommodation. People don't say accommodation in Zimbabwe. So if you optimize for that, you are optimizing for the wrong audience because nobody searches for that. People search for accommodation in Harare or in Abondel or in here. So all that facts about your website, you get it from what? The keyword research and that you do within SEO. The facts about your users. Where are users coming from? I noticed that uh, most of my users, they use desktops, not phones. Okay? So, uh, I actually have a lot of things removed from the mobile site. Like the one page slide is not available on the mobile site. They have pictures and all that, and all that. So, I removed it. And most of the people are coming from desktops. And they use the internet till Monday and Friday, which means they're using office internet. So, if I'm gonna, it makes me make a lot of decisions around that because I know. But many people, they don't know. Especially those who are in charge of the marketing, they don't know anything about. Uh, then there's an ongoing research. The ongoing research, this is about uh, if you're not going to improve your website, you know exactly what to look at and things to do. Then I described this one, complete analysis and possible improvement. 
first point, point, point is I realized at the point that uh, my about us page was ranking higher for my actual page that talks about web design. Uh, so I needed to redo my about us page and do some engineering to make this page rank for what's, what, what it's worth for. So that's like a, an improvement point. Or your bounce rate. Uh, bounce rate is like how many people just come into a website and go away without clicking anything, without going to another page. Or sometimes with, within 10 seconds they just stay. So these guys who sell space for advertising, they'll say, oh yes, we have 150,000 page views, but a lot of them, they are bounces. They just, they pick the website for 10 seconds and leave. So you make a payment on that based on the, the other, the important metric to look at is actually the users, not the, the page views or something. That's, that's for something. All right, then uh, we have, uh, so after all this, for my e-commerce thing, I asked them to redesign their home page because it, has the, it had the highest bounce rate. If somebody came into the website from a product page, they were likely going to stay longer than from the home page. So we had to redesign it. We had to do website restructuring. Uh, some pages were hidden. Actually, pages which are actually important were far, far hidden. So we had to make them more visible. We had to redesign the checkout process. Uh, unfortunately, this client was not using something as simple as WooCommerce, which has a one page checkout. They wish something complex. You do this, you move to another one, five, six steps of checkout. So by the time the client finishes, they are tired of checking out and answering questions. So we had to redesign that. Then I had to ask them to do blogging. And many people, when you say blogging, what comes to your head is uh, maybe you can just talk about uh, what happened at uh, mid up today. You can actually do blogging for your business. Do you understand? Like blogging for your space of business. And that blogging that will actually make you any money. Not any money because you, you now have a large audience and they're selling advertising space. No. Get more clients for whatever you are doing. Like we, 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 I do blogging um, for SEO. I do blogging about web design. I do blogging about website management and stuff like that. This is to generate more clients for myself. Why? Because the more people you give solutions, the more people trust you and they don't feel they don't feel like they are giving somebody they don't know. They are already convinced that you know what you're talking about. Like so recently somebody who is like a prospect for SEO, I wrote an article uh, which is uh, out of rank high on Google step by step guide. And I posted to all my clients. And this guy who is a prospect replied and said, Thank you very much. I am sure that he can't implement what I recommended, but he just says that I know what I'm talking about and you'll be my client. So you can do blogging to actually improve your Not just so, how to, uh, sorry to say, how to send a uh, WhatsApp to everyone in your, in your phone book. It's great blogging. It does create a lot of traffic, but it doesn't make business for you. You start having headaches about, how do I convert this traffic into money? Which is the blogger's main question. Um, so that's, I asked them to do blogging around their business, and then I, I asked them to do strategic media posts. Not just to wake up and say, Monday madness. Uh, then you put a picture of Coca-Cola. It's great. Your followers will say we like whatever and whatever, but it's not going to add any value in particular for your business. So there's this whole thing has to be very strategic if, if you follow. Uh, right. Then right. So the tools that you're gonna need for uh, doing SEO in in WordPress. Some of these are not WordPress. Some of them are just generic things. The first one is Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a clear thing. It does tracking for all your traffic and gives you a lot of uh, insights about your website. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, the good thing about it is that you can in install a, a plugin in WordPress which will get that uh, tracker into every one page and the future pages will come. So you can install Google Analytics. And then we have Google Search Console, which is also another Google product which gives you, this is where you get uh, uh, how many people are coming to my website searching for which web. Like one of my clients, their, their best word was two kids. Meanwhile, they, they, this, this is one of their least products. This is like an on, 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 online shop. Uh, their least product, their least profitable thing is two kids, right? But that was their 
best web in terms of SEO. And they were getting so much traffic about that. And it's not the most profitable thing. So because of that insight from Google Search Console, we had to beef up a couple other things which were more important to rank high. Then we have the used plugin. This plugin, like uh, my brother said, it's, it's uh, probably the best. It's not the only one. It's probably the best of, the, of them. And it has two versions, one free, one, and then there's premium, and then there's also one for agencies. Uh, where you buy one license, you'll be able to put it in several websites, and uh, it's two works. So that thing is very, very good. For then we have uh, only one SEO, which is another free uh, WordPress plugin, which can help you with that. Then we have, you need a keyword research tool. You can use Google AdWords uh, Keyword Planner for that. Keywords are basically the things that you want to rank for. Uh, you need to know what you want to be known for, or what you want to be known for. Then the next one is Google.co.sw. This may not sound like a tool, but it is actually a tool. All right. When you go on Google, uh, assuming that you have a fast connection, all right. when you go on Google and type website, it will immediately suggest some things for you. Yeah, how many have seen, have seen that before? Right. Those suggestions are associated with that page. They are actually some of the ways that you should consider it before. Right. So when you type website, and then these suggestions that come, they are actually some of the words which are being suggested, which you should consider ranking for around whatever you are doing. So Google is also a tool. Then Google Maps, this works for uh, local SEO. Local SEO is if you search for your business on the map, will we find it? If we search for your business on the map, will we find it? Sometimes we don't. And there's something called Google My Business, which works uh, the last one. Google My Business, you sign up, whatever, is the one that helps to create those site uh, snippets for, for your business. You sign up, they'll send you a letter to uh, the address that you've signed up for. For the first time, they'll send you a letter, please call it. Then when you open, there will be a code there. You put it in the menu. Because well, sometimes people sell things uh, and they, are, they don't have any fixed address. So they just need that verification. So how does this thing work? Um, how does it, uh, how do you get it to work? All right. So there are two parts of SEO, right? There's what, we, what is called on-page SEO and then there's off-page. Right? The on-page is maybe what is easier for uh, anybody who is a developer to do. The first thing is about titles. Wow. Uh, a lot of our home pages are called home. It's not true. Uh, that, that's a terrible title. Just to start with. Why? Because uh, maybe one advantage, maybe let's, let me just clarify on that. A title is um, on, on Google results. Let's just go back to a page where I have Google results so that I can explain to you something. All right. On here, this thing here, where it's written, where you venue. The blue line is the title of the page. Now, Google doesn't rank websites, it ranks pages. Did you get that? Google doesn't rank websites, it ranks pages. So this is the title of the page, which is wedding venue uh, uh, and the brand name. Then the next thing is the link or the URL of the page. Then this is the what? Uh, a meta description. So what the used plugin does, is that it gives you a chance sometimes for you the sake of your blog the best title for SEO is not the same as the, the best title for your audience I, I did an article on, on TechZim I think in August my title for the TechZim and my title for Google is actually different for that day. because I wanted to use that TechZim to keep sending traffic to my website for my long time so my title is web design is about with the best practices on TechZim it's something different why because this title is one, of, is one of the main things that is used by Google to determine. For example, we say here, uh, uh, Mana Safari Lodge, this thing says Mana Safari Lodge, and it's number one. Do, do you get it? So the first thing on on-page optimization is you want to take really uh, a good look on your titles. Your titles should have the, the words that you want to rank for. Uh, right? Then the second thing is permalinks. Uh, in Google, in, uh, sorry, in WordPress, the default is that you get this thing with the dead or the question mark and whatever. So you want to set your permalinks to the post type, the one that has meaningful. I'm sure you've seen a website which says a uh, common local design forward slash question mark p equals to 35 question mark category equals 759 and stuff like that. 
Those are the worst titles you could have. So sometimes in different SEOs is there. In WordPress is there as well. So you want to make sure that your payment links are in a post type, a post type which says, uh, which just takes your title and breaks it into, into, into like the link for the website. Uh, I, I came from, I went to see one uh, company with, which does fonts, they sell fonts. And the, oh, the website has this question mark, this, that. And they don't rank for their own products. They don't rank for their own brand even because of that. Uh, of those. So the payment links too have to have the word. Like for example, my, my page for web design, I'll use that as an example, or the one you saw, the SC one, is come look web design forward slash SEO dash Zimbabwe, right? That payment link is also, that word is also the, word, the keyword you're trying to watch to rank for. So don't just give page names by heart. You need to think about it, all right? So that's payment link. Then number two is hashtags. If you are familiar with HTML, you know that we have H1 up to H6, right? Google assumes that the H1, the words between the H1 tag are the most important words. Now, unfortunately or unfortunately, the developers or the, the ones who write in CSS, they just go and uh, style H3 and make it very nice. So eventually all the page titles become H3, 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 and there's no H1. So when the crawler comes, it wonders, what is this page about? There's no main topic about this page. So you want to make sure that all your pages have an H1, and if possible, the H1 about that page should have the word that you are trying to rank for. The reason why our local search results are almost empty with local content is because of us who name the, the sites for local. The sites that we develop are not sometimes scrollable. Sometimes, even though crawl, the structure of the HTML is not the best set to make sense to the search engine. So you want to, have to take notes of uh, the hashtag. Then the next one is image optimization. Image optimization talks about, uh, of course, the sizes of images. You don't want to have a 20 megabyte image into a page. Uh, you want to have small images. Then the next thing is about uh, out tags. When you, so when you put an image into WordPress, it goes into this big view. And then there's this whole list of options, the name, the title, the out tag. Don't leave those things empty. You need to put the, the, the name of, uh, let's say I'm optimizing for SEO in Zimbabwe, then the image I put on that page needs to have the same, this needs to have that keyword in the out right? It does, because Google has no way of telling whether it's a dog, or it's a picture, or it's a house. It can only learn that from what, from the out -tags. So you need to put the out in there. It's part of what, image optimization. So you want to optimize all your images and make sure that they make sense. All right. Then the next thing is uh, broken links. Well, uh, sometimes even internal links can be broken. Uh, the page, when you click contact us, it doesn't work or something happens. You just want to make sure that your site is clean from uh, broken links. All right. Then the next thing is about indexing. I was analyzing a website for this big corporate. It pains me that the big people are the ones who really struggle with these things. Uh, their site is scrollable only up to 46%, which means the rest of their pages are not indexed to you. And they will not be able to compete well. Then there's off-page SEO, this is the SEO efforts you make outside your website. Right, so the first thing there is social media. Uh, the mentions of your website, one of the reasons why you need to link your um, website with Facebook and all this and all this, is that it helps with this language. Let's say you, uh, let's say I wrote an article about SEO which has gone viral, and it has gone uh, maybe 10,000, a video which has maybe 10,000 views or 100 million, whatever number you have in your head, right? This thing will add to my SEO in that it gives Google the idea that this is something that people like, this is something that people are already enjoying. So if you search for SEO and you give you that, you are likely going to watch it, to enjoy it. Because the thing is Google is forcing, is fighting to give the best results. So whatever looks to them as the best, which people are already like, is going to be ranked high. So social media works there. So you also want to work on your social media, not just to get, well, some of us, we do have 9,000 likes, but then when you put a post, not even the person who will like it or say anything about it, it must worry, and you need to, you need to do something about it if you can. 
Right. The, the next thing is ex external links. Uh, external links is when you get a link from another reputable website, pointing to a website, talking about that. Now, when we talk about external links, there are two things. Number one, there is domain authority of the site where that link is coming from. A good example is this. If I, I get, a, I get a, a link from Herald, for example, which says, this site does web design, right? There's something which is called link juice. The link juice flows from Herald to mine and makes me a, what, a more reputable person online in terms of domain authority. But if I get the same link from a website which I opened yesterday, the, whatever I get from that website is for very small value. Right. So you want to get links from other websites which are sort of reputable and ranking well. That's why maybe for the guys like the texting people, they get people who want to guest blog here a lot. This is not true. Yeah. Why? Because people get, want to get those links to there. And I had to pay for mine when I did with them. When I did pay, I actually got one of my, uh, some of my rings actually changed because of that, because of those links. Because they are a reputable thing and my, my rankings went up because of that link to speak. Okay, so you wanna get links, but you wanna get them from good websites. And you wanna get them from uh, uh, websites which have like proper domain authority. Uh, if you could, you would have a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia is, is one of the few sites which I know which has 100 out of 100 domain authority. Uh, WordPress, I think it has 98. WordPress.com has 98. .org, I think it has 96 or something. These are the big, so if also, like when I wrote the article for the, this, uh, I wrote an article on the, on the blog, on the, on a website for this meetup, it actually added a bit of credit to my website, because uh, the web, mother website is a critical website. So you want to get external links from other websites. All right, so I, I know that I didn't say everything that I should have. Uh, you want to know maybe where somewhere else you can go to know more. There's a blog at Moss.com. Uh, they, they do a lot of good stuff there. The guys there are good. You could go there and learn. Then there's Yoast. Yoast actually has uh, tutorials. Uh, I don't know whether they are free or not, but they do have tutorials. They also have a mailing, uh, mailing list, which has a lot of good stuff. Then there's podcast. You know, Podcast is one of the places. I actually get to know about this meetup on the podcast because I follow, I think it's called WordPress Weekly, and they just made an announcement that, oh, Zimbabwe is going to have, and I said, so who's going to do that in Zimbabwe? And I go on the internet and I thought that it was him. At least I could find him on Google. <laughs> and that was, that was because of the meetup.com. Okay. So, uh, podcast, uh, uh, there's another one which is called Marketing School by Neil Patel and Eric Su, which, is, which are American guys. Very good. So you can learn more about these things. And see, one of the responsibilities of a developer is to make a website profitable. It's not just to get, get a page again, it's to get a website what? Profitable. So you want to do this and help your clients see the benefit of it. That's why it's difficult for us to charge more, because there are no direct benefits of every website. But if you do SEO for them, maybe at least the one page match, and they see the effect. When you come next time, you charge them three times. At least they've got an appreciation of what you've All right. Is there anybody with a question or a concern? This is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, maybe just briefly, if you could uh, explain to us how um, domain uh, extensions and um, the choice of uh, what affects your uh, SEO. Yes. All right. Okay, domain extensions, they have an effect. All right, good example is a dot c or dot zw domain is uh, directly pointed to the Zimbabwe content just by its nature. So when you go into Google search for I, if I had a connection, I would have told I would have shown you. If you go into Google search console, it actually shows you there's a section which is uh, written, I think, geotarget. Right, so you actually geotarget your site and say, I want this site to do well for Zimbabwe. So when you have a .com, it's open. You can point it to Russia, to wherever, to wherever. So many people who have not pointed their website, they have their website trying to rank in America, for example. Do you understand? They're trying to rank in, in Zambia, they're trying to rank. If you just try to point it your site to here, so a .com, .org, or unless you specifically point it in search console, 
it is trying to rank everyone, right? But it would see what is a W in terms of SEO for us who are here. It is an advantage in that it is automatically geo targeted to Zimbabwe. Then the issue of hosting, the issue of hosting does matter when it comes to the speed of the website. If your website is hosted, let's say, in the, in the US and there is no CJN to it, what it means is it will take my five to six seconds for it to load. And that is a very huge uh, ready factor. I know a client, I was joking about it, not a client, it's like competition. I was joking about it, they are, they are running a PPC on Google uh, for some word. When you click on their website, it takes about a minute to load. By that time, even though they paid for the click, you are tired, you are bored, you leave. So the worst thing, it would be better if you can secure local hosting, which makes the website fast, like click, 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 because it reduces bounce rate, it makes you stay, click more pages on the website, and those are good uh, indicators for, for your rankings. So not really that there's a difference in hosting, but the speed is what matters. So if local is going to help you with speed, you want to do that. Or if you could increase the speed for the one in the US or wherever, which acts the cheapest, we're using CTN, you want to do that. And there's, there's free CTN also, which works with the best, uh, I think it's Cloudflare. Cloudflare is that. Though it will have issues, uh, it will have... Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. So that's, you, are, you may want to do it. Okay, any other question? 